Jim considers the board before him carefully. He can feel a drop of sweat forming against his left temple as he considers what piece to move. His choices are beat the king by moving the piece he's touching or change his move, give the man the game and hope that winning would put him in a good enough mood to grant Jim the favour he was after. Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to another episode of Just In Time World. Today, I'd like to discuss gaming and gambling and what they add to a fantasy world. Before we get into it, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. In the description is also a link to my website and social media handles if you want to connect. Okay, let's get into it. What does gambling and gaming add to a fantasy world? Firstly, we humans are creatures of entertainment. We have had board games and card games and gambling games for as long as we have been a species. And when we see characters enjoying games that we can relate to, we relate to those characters. And it makes it an immersive experience for us, a believable experience. It also allows you to highlight cultural differences. If you think about in our own world, chess, which developed in the Western world, versus Go, which developed in the Eastern world, and that, that both are strategy games. And the differences that arise from those two games as cultural exploration tools. And lastly, it can add an element of being able to move the plot forward with conflict, but without combat, which is a topic that I'll speak more of in a little bit. First, let's talk about board games. This game is called Muraba Raba. It has been played since the Iron Age. It is still being played in the southern, uh, in the sub-Saharan African Africa region, and it is a complex strategy game with a very simple board, as you can see. You can carve the pegs and you can carve the board. Now, um, this game, by contrast, is an Aztec board game called Quitoli, and I am sure I have butchered that name. But you can see that it too is a simple board, but the rules around these games are quite complex. Now the important thing to learn from both these games is that when you're building a board game for the fantasy world, you have to consider the technology that people have available with which to make the actual board and pieces. You can't have Settlers of Catan when all that people have to work with is wood carving. Also, always be careful of paper. Remember, paper might be expensive or cheap depending on the, the, period, the, the level of technology in paper making. If people predominantly work with parchment, they're not going to have cards. So, who does board games well? What, where, where has board games been used well in literature? The girl who played Go is an amazing story. I highly recommend it and it's linked down below. It is not fantasy and you will probably cry your eyes out. So those are my two warnings about it. Um, then another author who's done board games very well is Catherine Kerr, who uh, has a board game called Cranoate that she references in the Devery novels. And... Um, it, it also gives you that feeling of familiarity because the characters say, let's have a game of Cranoid, the way we would say, let's go play a game of Settlers. Um, and then another, uh, the last author I'd like to reference that has used uh, games very well is Jacqueline Carey, who actually, this is not a board game, it's a drinking game from ancient Greece called Kotabos. And she used it to further the plot. So what happens here is her characters wager that they will win the game of Kotobos or the winner of the game of Kotobos gets a prize, um, which is a favor from the host of the party. And they then use that favor to achieve the ends that they need at the party. 
which as I say is a great way to move the plot forward and have conflict that is not deadly combat. Uh, so don't just completely fixate on board games, also consider a wider range of games. Greece has a drinking game that's been with us since forever called Kotabot. Okay, let's move on to gambling. So gambling um, is done very, very well by Raymond E. Faced in a world building sense. In his earliest novels, he speaks of two tavern gambling games called Poshwa and Pasha and Lin Lan. And then in later books, he speaks of these games being replaced by a game from the empire of Great Kesh called Pokir, which is a card game poker. Um, and then in even later games, in even la later books, he speaks of the taverns no longer running the gambling games, but instead of there being gambling houses that run gambling that are also associated with the god of luck. So you can see the actual development step by step of gambling in his world. And this gives you as the reader an extremely immersive experience in the development of this world. As you can see by the fact that I can simply recite this whole history. So consider all of those elements in terms of, of your gambling world. Now, in terms of card games, again, remember the paper trap. Paper might or might not be readily accessible. But basically, in, in card games, you've got two elements. One is uh, play the man style of games, like poker, where you're bluffing and you're playing against somebody. And the other one is counting strategically style of games, like blackjack, hit me, don't hit me, depending on the probabilities and statistics. Dice games are great. Dice have been with us since we've been able to carve them out of bones. And you've got three basic forms. Um, you've got the totals based dice game, an example of which is highest point, which is simply every player rolls two dice, highest total wins. Done. Then you've got uh, the actual face value games like Hazard, which is actually the Arabic word for dice. And that game developed into craps, if you're into that kind of uh, thing. And how that works is you, you bet on what the face value of the dice will be when the roll is completed. And then your uh, final form of dice game is where you roll above or below a certain number. An example of this is Fasse Dik, which is actually referenced in the Bible. In Matthew, the Roman soldiers are playing a gambling game well, well, when they're crucifying Christ. And the game that they're playing, according to the Gospel of Matthew, is Fasse Dik which is above or below 10. So um, you've got a lot of op good options there in terms of creating a gambling game. And I'll make some shorts on gambling and board games and so on. Now, how should you use gambling in your, in your world? So here you've got a lot of plot options. You can have your player lose, you can have your players or your uh, stories or your characters, depending on whether you're running a game or writing a story, lose everything. You can have them gain everything. You can have them be in a position where they owe a bad guy a favor or where a bad guy owes them a favor. So you can really change the dynamic that they are operating in without hurting them physically. So you've, got, you've suddenly opened up a lot of options in terms of having conflict without having combat. The last thing I just want to touch on um, is gambling halls versus taverns. Remember, taverns would use gambling as a draw card. So for them, it's not about making money. But a gambling hall, the house always wins. They are there to make money, which is why when in, my, in my world where I do have gambling halls, um, I have a bet called the lick lick bet, which is basically you bet on everything. You bet on the face value and the total and that it's going to be above a certain number. The, the chances of you hitting this bet is pretty much null. But a lot of people take that bet because people are suckers and the house always wins. So remember that design distinction if you're setting, if you're setting things up in your world. Or do you have taverns that use gambling as a draw card? Or do you have casinos which use gambling as a means to make money? 
and that's all i'm going to cover today i hope you found that informative please do comment below about any gambling games that you've seen used really well do comment also below if you've used gambling or gaming in your world and anything else world building related let me know and i will see you next week for another episode of just in time world